Hey guys, welcome to the video. Let's look at Python salaries in 2019. I'm recording this late, well, mid-November 2018. So we, we're looking into the future just a little bit here. And uh, it's a bit of a reality check. So let me give you the big bullet points. So uh, just in case you, you got to go get a coffee or something, you'll get the gist of the video. Python guys and girls will make very good money as Python programmers within the ballpark of any of the other major languages, Java programmers, C-sharp programmers, Ruby programmers, JavaScript programmers, PHP programmers. How much you make ultimately has a lot to do with your experience, how good of a developer you are, whether you have really good communication skills. Something is not mentioned enough on the YouTubes and elsewhere Good communication skills, written and verbal, very important for software developers. The biggest problem I have with people who worked for me over the years is communication. If we can understand exactly what was going on, then we get things done much more qu quickly. Uh, let me translate this. If I give instructions to my developers about how I want a particular piece of software written or what architectures, et cetera, et cetera, down to even little details, the more easily they can understand me and communicate what they're doing, it's a lot less work in the end in terms of the development. So don't discount communication skills. So let's get back to Python salaries. One of the misconceptions out there is that the Python programmer will make on average a little bit more than other developers. You see these videos are being put out there where they talk about Python programmers making, you know, five, six, seven thousand dollars more than the typical Java programmer or the typical JavaScript programmer. So for example, they'll say that Python guys will make 120 grand or 115 grand and the Java programmer will make on average 110 or 111 grand and so on and so forth. So what the mistake that Beginners make this, I got to go learn Python. I got to learn Python. I can make an extra six grand a year. Now, you know, 110,000 versus 116 this is North America. But it's not a big difference, right, in, on, in the grand scheme of things, right? Because when you're at that level and you're working for somebody that level financially, uh, salary-wise, you're at that level, you're going to get the taxes put on you really hard. Right? You get taxed pretty high. When you're making the bigger money in most countries now, depending where you live, there might be different rules. But I say in North America, when you get into that level, your tax level of taxation is high. So that extra six thousand may look juicy to you, but you're not making six thousand more. You might be making an extra two, three at the end of the day. So the number one thing I would consider when you're looking at uh, jobs and languages and frameworks and the type of programming what you want to do, figure out what type of programming you want to do. You know. Yeah, you might make more money doing data science related programming, and we'll get into that in a second. But if you don't like it, then it's going to be a pretty bad existence for you, right? You may find that you much prefer doing front end development, which pays really well. UI related stuff, maybe with a framework like React or Vue or Angular or something. You got to look at the type of work that you're doing. Don't just chase the numbers. Now, let's get back to the numbers. Reality check about Python salaries is that the average salary that you see listed in Python, that little juice, that little extra five, 6000 a year that you see, that a lot of it is driven by the uh, outsized earnings of data scientists, people with uh, master's degrees in AI programming. These people with higher level degrees college degrees, university degrees, who are being paid a lot of money because they have very specialized skills and they got the, the master's degree or they got the, uh, the PhD. I'm assuming a lot of you watching this video are looking at programming from the point of view of somebody who doesn't want to go to school, doesn't want to spend three, four or five years in school getting that master's degree or that bachelor's in uh, engineering. If you pull out those unusual people, the data scientists, who are uber nerds. You pull out those uber nerd salaries, all of a sudden Python's average, you know, though it's not that much higher to begin with, comes down to about the same as everybody else. So don't pursue Python simply because you think you're going to make a little bit more. In fact, it's just not there, I think, in reality. Now, 
where you're much more likely to make more if you don't have a university degree is if you work on uh, skills of communication, you work on uh, developing good general purpose, general, uh, you know, I'll say general purpose programming skills. So you're efficient with your coding, uh, you, you're good at documentation, again, back to communication. In terms of what language and what framework, whether you go with Node or PHP or Python or Ruby or whatever, it depends on the type of work you want to do again and also where you live. That's another major point I should point out. Different parts of the world, there's different strengths. In different areas, you may find a ton of jobs in Java. You know, so maybe in New Jersey, there's a lot of Java jobs. And then on the West Coast, maybe there's a lot of Python uh, Django jobs. Maybe there's Ruby jobs, you know what I mean? So on and so forth. So you have to look at where you want to work, geography-wise, see where the demand is, go to indeed.com, go to local job sites, check it out. It's worth your time, right? And then uh, you look at the type of work you want to do. For instance, I, there may be high, high-paying jobs in building algorithms for AI, but it's not the type of coding I'd want to do, so I'm not going to do it. A general life tip, do what you like, because uh, if you chase the money and you're miserable going to work every day doing a type of thing that you don't like, it's not a good existence, right, generally speaking. So there you go. That's the reality of the Python uh, salaries. Yes, Python people can make a lot of money. I think if you pull out the data scientists and you pull out the people with the master's degrees, it's probably right about where the other uh, programmers make. And let me point out again, in a big way, the freelance space. The freelance space is uh, something to highly consider because there's huge advantages to freelancing. And that is, well, you're free. You can do any type of work that you wanna do. You can choose your language. You can choose your frameworks most of the time. You can choose your clients. You can choose when you wanna work, how you wanna work. and Typically, when you're self-employed like that as a freelancer, your tax benefits are huge. So you're going to pay much less taxes than somebody working for somebody. So in the end, yes, there's a bit of a startup time with freelancing. you got to get it going. But in the end, you're going to be making much more money as a freelancer than you would be working for somebody, with some exceptions. But you have that setup time. you got to build up to it. There's no question about that. But I, you know. Shameless plug, I teach that. So, there you go. That's the reality check about Python programming in 2019. Is it worth pursuing? For sure. I have a Python course I teach, but I also teach JavaScript. I also teach PHP. And I also teach, of course, HTML, CSS, SQL, databases, and other things as well. So, I'm neutral. I'm not just some guy saying, I have JavaScript course, so you should learn JavaScript. Or I have a PHP course, you just learn PHP. No, I, I teach these three languages. And in fact, if you know my channel, if you want to become a developer quickly and efficiently, and easily, you learn the fundamentals of development, period. And it, this is these are concepts and techniques that are universal across all the major languages. So, And when I teach, for instance, Python, I'm not just teaching Python, I'm teaching you programming. I'm teaching you object-oriented object programming. Talk, I'm teaching you about modularity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then when you do my JavaScript, I teach you other things because JavaScript has certain strengths. And then when I teach a PHP, I teach you other things because PHP has certain strengths, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So try not to get caught up in the whole language wars and technology war things. At the end of the day, if you're a good developer, you can move from one language to the next without difficulty. And there you go.